Welcome to Unite Now, where we bring unity to you, wherever you are. Welcome everyone to Asset Management with ProBuilder, Polly Brush, and FBX Exporter. If you're just joining in again, you know, please put it in the chat. So again, welcome everyone. Let's get right into it. Let's get to introductions. My name is Sandeep Kulkarni. I am a product operations manager right here at uh, Unity. So what do I do? So basically I work with our product team, uh, supporting our product roadmap and development across educational institutions, nonprofits, students and educators. Um, I also handle the live learning operations over here across our teams. And a little background, I'm a former faculty uh, and taught a lot of different 3D programs and also been a technical trainer in the animation and, and VFX industry and also an artist. And with me today, we have the awesome Steven. Steven, why don't you introduce yourself? Hi, I'm Steven Sutherland. Thank you, Sandeep, for the introduction. <laughs> uh, I'm a 3D artist and uh, animation instructor. So I've been teaching for quite a few years uh, at a couple different schools now, um, but also my primary sort of goal in life, I'll say, is working in 3D. I have uh, I've got a lot of my experience and Unity experience, so it's kind of my background there. Yeah. And me and Steven, you know, we, we, when we started talking, we were like, oh, we have such a similar background, both yeah. of us. <laughs> <laughs> Even worked at some of the same places, different locations, but yeah. Okay, who do we have with us today? We have our awesome moderators, as always. We have James Turnage Landon, we have Michael Taylor, we have Brian Kinney, we have Sai Charan Komanda, and we have Abhishek Singh. So thank you, thank you, thank you, guys. Uh, nothing's possible without these moderators in these sessions. So big round of applause, if you can, in the chat. Let me see some of that <laughs> for the moderators. <laughs> okay, uh, moving on to our outline. Uh, we are going to do some announcements right now. You know, you probably already know that you're using 2019.4. This was already posted on the page. Uh, we're going to talk about session guidelines and Unity Learn. A lot of people I know are already familiar about Unity Learn, but if you're not, if this is absolutely your first time over here, then we'll tell you about that. Um, we are going to have around 35 minutes or so. We're going to talk about uh, the challenges, Unity challenges, what we're going to do. We're going to install ProBuilder, PolyBrush, and we'll get into that. And uh, we'll still have a good 10 minutes to complete your scene, and we'll still have a nice five minutes for Q&A. So overall, a really packed session, so let's get right into it. If this is your first time here, then you will notice on some of the slides that I'm going through, you will notice these three icons. So what do these three icons mean? Uh, we at Unity over here really, really expect everyone to be, you know, watching when you see this watch icon, because that's a great way to learn. That way when Steven is showing you something, and if you're just doing this for the first time, just watch, absorb everything, and we will give you a chance to do it. And that's when that, you know, thumbs up icon in green will come up. That's when you'll do. And a lot of times you'll also see a little yellow icon with a question mark and that's Explorer. That's when Steven will be talking about some tips and tricks. And at that point, it's really your chance to either just listen, absorb as much as you can. If not, you can keep, you know, playing around with the software. So keep attention to those slides and I will be guiding you throughout that as well. But watch, do and explore. That's a great way to learn always. Ideal Zoom layout. Um, you probably already have seen that we have a chat window. We also have Q&A. Please keep your technical questions um, in the Q&A. Our awesome moderators are there to answer all those questions. Anything else you want to comment about, just send us messages in the chat. Okay, and if we have any polls, which I don't believe we do this time, do we have anything, Stephen, this time? No, no, I didn't set up any polls. This okay, time. no worries. So we are not going to launch any polls today, but um, any, any technical questions, again, go in the Q&A and everything else, you know, goes in the chat. Also, some ground rules. If you're new here, uh, if you're lost, you can always catch up on the recordings. Now, some people like to follow along when they're learning. Um, you can always download the Unity assets, which were posted in the chat earlier. So they're still there. So go and download the Unity assets. If you don't want to follow along, if you feel that you're lagging a little behind, no worries. Remember, we always record all our sessions. All our live learning is always recorded, so you can always go and access it. So it's a good idea to, even if you just want to sit back, relax, just absorb everything and go and do it later. You already have the assets, you'll have the recording, you can watch it and do it at your own pace. Again, questions should be in the Q&A panel and comments in the chat. Uh, please be very respectful and constructive about them. Um, you have to download 2019.4. I'm sure you have it open right now with the new Unity project. Again, that's where the assets are. And again, this session is recorded like all our sessions and all messages are seen by Unity. So the moderators are actively watching the chat and Q&A, so please be very kind. 
So again, we are going to get into the Unity challenges right now. So what we're going to do in this session is we'll start with importing an asset package. Uh, we'll install ProBuilder, PolyBrush, and ProGrids, and Steven's going to walk you through that. Uh, we're going to gray box a room with ProBuilder and ProGrids, which is amazing. And then we'll also start sculpting an object in PolyBrush. So I hope everyone's ready. We've got a lot to cover. And with this, Steven, you want to take it away? Sure, I will take it away. So a couple things first, I want to make sure if you already have Unity open, that's okay. I'm going to start from the Unity Hub um, first. And so if you haven't don't have anything open yet, that's, that's fine. If you already have Unity open, you can just kind of follow along. This is sort of my preferred steps to, to get us going. So I'm going to go ahead and share my Unity Hub. Do, there we go. What I'm going to do, I make sure that uh, in my installs, I've got 2019.4.4 F1 installed. If you've got a previous version of 2019.4 earlier, it, might, it would probably still work for earlier versions. The tools that we're using have been kind of available for a while. So it's probably going to, you could probably use different versions, but I'm using 2019.4. I'm going to go to the new button. I'm going to just go to the drop down and make sure I'm choosing 2019.4.4 to create a new project. And it opens up my new project window, but uh, I have to switch to it <laughs> so that you guys can see it. Because uh, usually when I switch to it, you can't see it automatically right away. So there we go. Now we have this new project in Unity 2019.4.4. And I'm just going to create a new Unity project. I don't, uh, at this point in time, I'm not going to be concerned about the name, but uh, I'm going to call it New Unity Project 1. And I'm going to use the 3D template. You could use the Universal Render, Universal Render Pipeline. It also should work in uh, high, definition, high definition RP. You should probably have to update your materials. Um, but anything we're doing uh, right now today, it shouldn't matter if you use one of the other two. Um, you know, 3D uh, or universal pipeline or HDRP. So I'm going to go ahead and create. So it's opening up Unity in the background. Uh, so all I really did was uh, kind of the very basic steps to open Unity. And uh, once that's set up, we're going to kind of switch back here. The next thing, if we could move on, uh, we'll move on to the next slide while you guys are kind of getting that set up. Um, I want to kind of talk about the next, uh, the kind of the next step that you'll have to do is which is to download the materials. So if you've already downloaded them, you should be already kind of set to go with these materials, right? Uh, so you're choosing that asset management uh, assets.unity package. So when once Unity opens, we can kind of move on to this next step. Yeah, and the, <laughs> the, the materials are again posted in the chat for those of you who came in late or still trying to access that. And you can also go to the project page to download these materials. And also is linked, as you can kind of see in this little screenshot on the slide, that uh, you could go to the Pro Builder documentation, the PolyBrush documentation, and the FBX exporter documentation from that page. So if you haven't already, take a moment, and download the, those assets while Unity is opening. My Unity is now open in the background and we'll kind of switch to that. But go ahead and go through these steps, make sure it's downloaded and, and have that ready. I was going to ask you, you know, how do you like uh, ProBuilder while they're doing that? And, I uh, actually Pro really have enjoyed using ProBuilder. Um, it's, it's funny, it's not as full featured as using Maya or something, but it's a great way to start. Um, and if you're using the Maya or 3DS Max workflows, um, it's kind of a great way to kind of move. Um, no, absolutely. I mean, I, I know when I first uh, opened Pro Boulder up in Unity and I was like, wow, this, you can actually do this in Unity now. <laughs> yeah, 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 exactly. Of course, my brain started connecting back to Maya and 3ds Max. Uh, and I was yeah. like, <laughs> there's some similarities, but there's some unique differences. So Absolutely. Um, somebody mentioned in the Q&A, I just noticed in the Q&A, somebody said that you opened the kitchen scene and it's all um, pink probably or, or purple or pink. Don't worry about it. Don't fix anything. Don't fix the materials. Uh, I'll get into that. Um, once we kind of get to a point, it'll, it'll all get fixed. So don't worry about if you opened up the kitchen scene and it looks, uh, it's missing scripts or textures. Don't worry about it yet. Just leave it as it is. We'll get yep. into that. Uh, some people have already imported the asset, obviously, with that question. Somebody already imported the asset. So I'm going to do that now. We could just kind of walk through it really quick. So if you don't mind, I'm going to take that over and I'm going to go to my Unity. So I just have a, a, just a brand new scene, nothing else in it. There's a couple different ways that you can uh, bring in the asset. Uh, one of the easiest is you could just drag the, uh, the asset package into the project window. 
and uh, you can see this import Unity package. You can also go to File and Import Networks as well. But once it pulls up, you make sure that you click on Import. So it's going to, everything that's in the asset package, you'll be able to import. Um, and then once that's there, I can actually go to scene. What one person said is they opened up the kitchen scene and it's all, you know, purple or pink. Um, don't worry about it. <laughs> don't worry about that yet. We'll get to that. So we'll fix that in kind of the next step. So um, let's give a couple of people or some time to, to, um, to do that, to kind of get to that point, have everything loaded in the scene like that. Yeah, so the steps are already on the screen. And while the steps are on the screen and people are doing it, there's an interesting question that came um, in the Q&A and looks like it was about Blender and looks like it's already answered. Oh. Um, it was about if you can open you know, Blender 2.8 can export ProBuilder FBX to Blender 2.8. So yeah, it looks like SciCharon has already answered it. So yes, you can export to OBJ, STL, PLY. STL is a great file format, by the way. Oh, yeah. yeah. For you know, stereolithography for printing and stuff. Hmm. Okay, let's move on. I think this is a pretty simple steps we are doing over here. Hopefully everyone's caught up. Yeah, it's a pretty simple step. Hope, yeah, if, and if people are just kind of following along, that should be pretty good. Absolutely. So the next thing we're going to get started with Pro Builder, um, which is a 3D modeling and design tool, as you know, built right into Unity for those of you who've never used it, because we saw a lot of people at the beginning saying we've never used it. So what is it? It's again, a 3D modeling and design tool built into Unity, which means you can start building inside Unity now. Uh, Polybrush also enables you to blend textures and colors. It allows you to you know, scatter some game objects called meshes, really, really a great tool. And ProGrids, do you want to tell us more about ProGrids? Uh, yeah, Steve? sure. Um, I, I started using ProGrids um, pretty much at the same time as I was using ProBuilder. It's a great way to kind of line up, snap objects together, line them up to a grid. Uh, and especially when building assets, you can kind of make sure that they're an appropriate dimension. Um, it, it just uses this great, kind of snapping on, on multiple levels. Um, so ProBuilder and ProGrids really work well together. Yeah. That's really cool because I remember, uh, I'm sure, Stephen, you've uh, come across this way back in the day with Unity, you know, sometimes the snapping, you know, when you're not able to do it properly, I had to actually go back to my or 3ds Max and then get it back in there. So that's, I'm glad they have that. So Stephen is going to show you how to install ProBuilder if you've never done it. So please watch right now as he walks you through that. Yeah, me, uh, switch to Unity here. So this is going to take a couple little uh, steps to set it up. So we're going to install three different packages, uh, those three different packages. So the first thing we're going to end up doing is going to the package manager, going to Unity and package manager. And as that opens up, there it goes. Uh, oh, there it is. Hopefully everybody can see that pretty well. Um, so uh, one thing I want to make sure the ProGrids is still in a preview and ProBuilder and Polybrush uh, are sort of fully released, I guess you could say. They're not in preview. So, but we do need to show preview packages to get them all, all three. So I'm going to kind of step through each one of these and then, uh, and then we're going to kind of cut back to the slides to kind of show you the steps. Um, but I'm going to scroll down and I'm going to find Pro ProBuilder first. So, whoop, passed it up there. Uh, Pro Builder. So, and then I'm going to go ahead and click install. If you already have it installed, you might be seeing an update button. Um, you can also go and see all the older versions. I'm going to go ahead and install version 423 and click install. And as it's installing, it's going to take a little bit to kind of install the package. So I'm going to go ahead and stop the share. If you want to show the slides there and they can do that first step. Absolutely. If you're doing this again for the first time, um, it's under select, you know, go to window package manager. So you just go to your window drop down package manager. That's where everything is located and choose advanced and show preview packages and locate pro builder under P uh, it's nicely ordered mm -hmm. and you should install. And if you have an update button, like Steven mentioned, just install 4.2.3 should be pretty straightforward, pretty quick. Again, if you haven't used this, you know, for those of you using this for the first time, this is pretty cool. I mean, your world will open up <laughs> when you realize like, oh, I can quickly start prototyping and, you know, I can quickly start building, you know, geometry inside of Unity now. And you can apply all those skills from different 3D modeling packages. As yeah. a lot of people call DCC, 
yep. <laughs> digital content creation tools. Okay, All this right. should be pretty straightforward. Let's go on. Sure, let's move on to the next step. So we're going to install ProGrids. Uh, you'll notice now once I install uh, ProBuilder, it's fixed all the you know the textures and everything. So it was waiting for that package to be installed. If you have the kitchen scene open, you'll kind of see that. So I'm going to go back to Package Manager. If you still have it open, that's great. And then I'm going to go to Poly Polybrush. I think that's what we're on, right? The Polybrush step, or uh, or did I install ProGrids first? Did on the slides? Did I uh, install ProBrush or or Polybrush or ProGrids first? Uh, ProGrids first. Oh, okay, so I'm going to go. I'll find ProGrids, which is down here, and that's why we have to have this uh, show a, show preview packages. As you see, ProGrids says it's preview dot six. So I'm going to go ahead and click install on that. And if we want to switch back to the slides real quick, we can kind of bring up the steps for that. Yeah, super easy. So locate ProGrids. You know, same place again. Click install and update to version uh, preview three dot oh dot three. So pretty straightforward, as you can see, and you have a nice little snapshot over there on the slide too. Yeah. And the next thing we're going to do is the poly brush. Yep. Okay. On to poly brush. I know it's kind of back and forth really quick, but I want to make sure everybody kind of catches all three of these. So I'm going to go back to the package manager. If you still have it open, that's great. Uh, go to poly brush. Uh, and then I'm going to go ahead and click install on that. There, as it's installing, let's go back to the slides. And that's all the packages for now that we need to install. If you want to, if you want to go ahead and install the FBX exporter, you can, but we kind of have a, a sort of a, a furthering sort of step uh, later down the line. You can kind of install, use that. Yeah. Again, these should be pretty straightforward, you know, really easy. Um, they are located in the same area over there and all under P, so easy to find. Yep. Um, I think people must be done by now because it's so um, quick. And they install yeah. pretty quickly too. So let's let's move on. Um, great. And can you tell us a little about, um, you know, the whole asset management and all these tools, Stephen? Sure, yeah. Um, so... ProBuilder, if I put in a link there, which actually is linked from the project page. You can go to the, the project page uh, for asset management and it's got the link to this, but I thought I'd put it in there for you that you can kind of see all the documentation on ProBuilder, right? Um, it is a 3D modeling level design tool. It's great for uh, gray boxing, um, for kind of setting up things and then you can kind of build on to that later uh, if you feel like it, right? Uh, it's really optimized for very simple geometry. Um, it, it's kind of set up to, to really kind of quickly um, sculpt, or not, sorry, sculpt, but build uh, kind of world building, right? Um, it, it is, uh, it's got some interesting UV unwrapping tools. Um, so some fairly simple. So if you're used to doing any UV unwrapping, uh, this will kind of start the process for you and you can kind of further it later. Uh, it is again, like I said, an ideal, ideal tool for gray boxing and you can use it to create something in unity, bring it in, use the DCC tools to round trip it. Meaning you can take it to Maya or 3ds max and then back to unity. You can improve it in unity or, or sorry, in uh, Maya or 3ds max. And and for those of you who are coming in late slightly, I see that James has posted a nice little link over there. So please go to that link. Um, and also the assets link is in the chat too. Um, so with that, let's get to a first challenge using ProBuilder. So again, everyone, please uh, watch as Stephen will walk you through the steps. So Stephen, take it over. Sure. Um, I, I saw one question pop up in the Q&A. What is gray boxing? It's a great question. Um, and I'll kind of share my screen and we'll kind of talk about that as we go through. So gray boxing is a way of sort of quickly building out a level to kind of uh, get your uh, sizing correct, to uh, figure out a layout. Um, it's a great way to just sort of, just sort of quickly lay out what you want to build in your world or what you want to build in your scene. Um, so that's kind of the idea or concept of gray boxing. Cool. Uh, so what we're going to end up doing here is if you open up the kitchen scene, you're going to see this is kind of the idea of what we're doing is we're building this kitchen and we're going to build it from kind of a floor plan. We're just going to kind of really kind of anchor it out. I'm just going to really um, go through the basics of it and you can add more detail and you don't have to follow this kind of this floor plan in this um, sort of this kitchen, but um, we have the, there's a texture in here. We have some materials where there's a texture of this blueprint. And I'm going to talk about how we can uh, set that up. The first 
couple things I want to do, sort of set up some uh, of the panels that uh, ProGrids and ProBuilder use. So the first thing I want to set up, and you'll notice like in mine, you already see these little, this little widget appear in the scene. This is from ProGrids, right? And so this is going to allow me to show uh, and, and kind of snap to these, these grids, and I'll kind of talk that, about that process. So I'm going to go to Tools and go to ProGrids and go to ProGrids Window, right? And that, if it this ever disappears, that's what pulls it up, right? So I can kind of see that. The next thing I'm going to do is go to the Pro Builder, and I'm going to go to the Pro Builder window, and it's going to pull up a little panel of uh, a couple different options for Pro Builder. And we usually what I end up doing is I kind of dock that next to the hierarchy. I just kind of drag it over there and dock it next to to the hierarchy, so I can kind of get quickly get to uh, some of these options, right? A um, couple of the things that I want to do is I, I do want to set up my, uh, my pro grids so that it snaps to what I call all axes or what it's called all axes. So X, Y, and Z. So uh, I'm actually going to go to my preferences and I'm going to go to pro grids. And here it's going to say snap method is snap on, on selected axis. I want to snap on all axes. So I want, to, uh, I want it to snap both up and down, left and right, and forward and back, right? All those. Cool. So that, that just kind of sets that up. The other thing I want to do is this little, um, these are all the little buttons for ProGrids. 0.5 says it's going to snap at uh, half of a unit, right? So I can snap it at one full unit or uh, every half unit, right? So that's kind of the quick ProGrid settings right there. This one toggles the uh, line drawing for the grids. And if I have it on three, 3D grids, you're gonna see all axes, all the, the grids show up on all axes, right? I can just show the X, I can just show the Y, and I can just show the Z, which is kind of a, a cool way to line things up. So if you just wanna line things up vertically um, or uh, horizontally, um, or in depth, you can turn on each one of those grids. So the other thing is uh, you can kind of go through and look at some of these other options. This turns snapping on and off, right? Again, this turns the grid on and off, and I'm going to choose the 3D grid. So I can kind of, we're going to be able to see this all the way around. And here, let me, I'll just kind of demonstrate really quick what this will kind of do. So I'm going to um, select one of these objects in here and I make sure that I'm cool. Switch back to here. There we go. Um, and you're going to see when I move this around, it snaps in place. It doesn't gradually, you know, get to one to the next. It's snapping at at, at point one or half of the va or a half of a unit. So I'm going to change it to one, and now it would snap at one unit. You're going to see the the grid is going to update, which is kind of a really cool way to move things around and position them. One of the ideas is that if you're building things modularly, if you're going to create, you know certain things you say your your wall is going to be four units wide and your door is you know two or three units wide you know that they're exactly at those units which is really kind of cool we're going to start from there that's so that's kind of a little bit of introduction about progrids when you open up the pro uh, builder window when you open up that window and you bring that pro builder tab like i said you can float it above anything if you want you can have it you can dock it anywhere i usually like it docked over here so when i switch to it i'm working in that tool i'll have it floating above you can work in whatever mode that feels comfortable to you but you'll see that window you'll also see this little object selection so i can select things this is an object selection mode this is vertex selection, so I can get in here and then select things by vertice, right? And switch to W, right? I can select objects and select their vertices. I can get in here and select their, uh, their edges, and then I can select their faces, and it'll make more sense when I kind of create new objects, right? So I'm going to do quickly move into kind of Pro Builder here, and we're going to talk about this a little bit. So um, you can switch this window to, to show icons, but right now I'm going to keep it uh, just on kind of the names so you can kind of see which names that I'm creating. But you'll see this new shape button. It's at the, the upper uh, left of this window. 
And you see the little plus sign right there. It's saying, here's the new shape. It actually, when you hover over, you're going to get this little, um, this little tool tip, right? But if you hold down your Alt or Option button and you click that, you're actually going to see the uh, options for that tool, right? I'm going to bring over the options. And right now on the Shape tool, it's set to Cube. So when I uh, first open it up, it's going to want to create a cube. You'll actually kind of see it in the scene right here, and I can actually move it around, I'm gonna, uh, switch back to my object selection, and I can move it around. But that tool box is still open. It just kind of hid in the background, right? And I'm going to switch it down. I'm going to go to a plane, a flat plane, and I can determine, you know, what, what its width is. Let's say I want to make it a one by one, or I can make it a five by five, and I think I'm going to leave it on a five by five, and how many segments it has, right? One thing to kind of note, if I close this window, it's gonna, the object is going to disappear. That's because I didn't click the build button, right? Um, so I'm going to go back to new shape. I'm going to click that little plus and it, and it goes back to plane. You're going to see that that plane kind of comes back. So I need to make sure that I click this build. Super important if you realize that your objects are disappearing, you need, need to make sure that you click that build button. Right, and then it'll actually create whatever shape that you have selected here. So I'm going to go ahead and close that window, right? And now I have this just basic shape, uh, this basic plane. That what I'm going to do is I'm going to apply the blueprint material to. So I'm going to just go ahead and go down to my projects uh, or my project window, go to materials, find that blueprint, and I'm just drag it right on top of that flat plane, right? And with that selected, you're going to see that. It repeats, right? I'm going to get all, you know, get close to it here. You're going to see that texture com uh, complete. So it gives me a, a great opportunity to show you some of the UV tools here in Pro Builder. So I'm going to head over to my Pro Builder window. And with that selected, I want to make sure that I'm on that component selector. I'm going to go to the UV tools, uh, which at this point, I don't see it. There it is, UV editor right there. Right, so I hover over that, you're going to see the UV editor. When you click on the UV editor, it opens up another window. And what this is going to show you are, if you've never experienced UVs, this is how the texture maps across a surface. You can see the texture right here, and you can see what, what are called the UVs, or the, those vertices are kind of lined up where that UV is here, so it repeats. So this space down here is you, I usually explain as just is sort of the up position and V is the, the, the horizontal, right? So uh, U is vertical. I know that might not make much sense in terms of U and a V, like V, it does not stand for vertical. So the U is up, the V is going this direction. So it's a way of this texture mapping across the surface. Right, and you'll notice that this is the area, these white lines are the area of that flat plane. And I have this texture that just kind of keeps repeating on each one of these squares. You don't see it in this window, but that's what's happening. That's why it's repeating, right? So when I select my UVs, if I can select this, I'm going to switch to, I'll kind of explain these buttons really quick. Here's kind of the normal move, uh, rotate, scale tools. I've got this object selection, which is kind of the same object selection as over here in the Pro Builder tools, but I can select things by a vertex, vertex right? And I can see all the vertex and the way they're lined up. If I select across them, I can kind of move them around. You're going to see that I can move my sort of the texture gets slid across the surface of that flat plane, right? Really all I have to do to make this work, and this is kind of one cool thing about the, these quick and easy UV tools here, is you start to see these actions once you've got some, something selected on your UV surface, right? You select all these vertices. You just click fit UVs, and it's going to fit whatever UVs into that UV space. So now it's not, it's not doubled up or anything, right? You can see that it's just mapping it across the surface. The way that th this works is your textures are usually a square, right? And if your object is a square, it's going to fit right in there perfectly, right? If your objects are not square, your texture needs to be manipulated on the UVs, right? Th in this case, it works out perfectly because my texture is square, my UVs are square. Right, my uh, object's uh, UV map is, is square. Uh, one other thing you can do, which is kind of cool, is there's this button right here is lock the scene view handles. So if I click that button and I 
uh, click or I press W or go to the move tool, right? When I select that object and, and go to the move tool, which I'm not seeing my, oh, I need to go into com uh, object selection. I go to the move tool, make sure that that's on. Uh, I can then slide, whoop, let me go back. Sorry, I need to be back in my UV tools. There we go. Let's switch here. There we go. And I select here, make sure that that's set. Now I should be able to slide my texture and it's not working for some odd reason. I probably forgot some, but you can slide it here too. This is supposed to allow you to kind of move, which it's moving my component, not my, uh, my object, but uh, that's gonna, should allow you to move your UVs in the scene view. Uh, but I'm going to move on because I don't want to kind of go through that into too much depth, right? But that's how I can get that to all fit into that uh, into that object. Yeah, if you're if the selection doesn't show up in the UV editor, make sure that you are switching to the the component mode or the object selection mode. When you go to the UV editor, you might have to select it and then uh, go back to it, and it should show up. Uh, and then you can use these tools here to kind of have it show up and make sure that you then switch. You'll notice that when I switch it here, it switches it in the scene view. So I can switch to faces and I can switch to, to uh, the uh, vertex mode, but make sure you're kind of selecting on the move tool and then you can kind of select the, the UVs in here. Oh, a couple other things that I wanted to show you um, about the um, uh, sort, of, sort of Pro Builder and how it kind of works is it has a dimension overlay, which is kind of cool. Uh, so I'm going to go to Tools, Pro Builder, and Dimension Overlay, and Show. And what this should show you is when I have an object selected, it's going to show you the dimensions of that object. So even if I come over here, it's going to show me what dimensions that object has been created at. So this one shows its height is 0 0.13, this one 225, the width and 1.5. So this one, it's 5 by 5, and it, it, since it's a flat plane, it has no, no depth, right? So, cool. Uh, this helps me when I'm kind of creating and building objects, uh, which is kind of the next step that I'm going to do. I'm going to rotate this so it kind of lines up. You don't have to put this in the same scene. Oops, sorry. Um, but it, it helps you to kind of have this uh, sort of lined up with the, the kitchen so you kind of see this and how, it, how it's set up. Oh, I need to be in... Sorry, I was rotating a vert vertice, but I need to be back in the object selection mode. So I'm holding down my, uh, I'm on a Mac right now, and I'm holding down command. If you're on a PC, you can hold down control. And if I'm going to rotate this, it'll rotate it. It'll kind of snap rotate it, right? So I can do it in very uh, specific intervals, right? So I'm holding down command, and I'm rotating that object. And I'm going to hit F again to kind of line that kitchen up to this other one. This, uh, I'm basically making a little mini kitchen here, uh, which is kind of, this is the same floor plan as this kitchen over here. So I'm going to kind of draw on this object, right? So how I can do this is I can, I'm going to use this new poly shape. And new poly shape allows me to place down vertices and then build those vertices up to create a quick object, right? So I'm going to click this new poly shape. And then when I click down on my scene, it's going to add... Uh, points. And it should, if it's, if snapping is working right, when I click and drag, I just, I click down and I didn't let up, but I click and drag and I can move that vertice left and right. Uh, I should be able to move it up and down too, but I can drag it right alongside, along this um, uh, sort of my floor plan here. And if it was bigger, I could probably snap it to uh, sort of where that should be, but I'm going to realign it, right? So I snap one vertice there. I'm going to snap another one here. I'm going to snap another one here. And I'm not holding down any of the modifier keys. It's just snapping because ProGrids is, is uh, turned on. Uh, and then I'm going to snap there. And I'm going to snap there. And then when I click the last vertice to kind of close the loop, it's going to make it, uh, it's going to kind of close that loop and then fill it in with, with, uh, uh, with polygons, right? So now I've got a poly shape that I can kind of keep clicking on I'm not, sorry, I'm not clicking, but click, keep dragging my mouse to raise its height. So if I want to make it this high or make it this high, I can always change it later, but this allows me to kind of get to a point where it's, you know, building the height of that. So I'm going to go to here and I'm going to just click 
and then it completes that shape, right? So now I have what kind of appears to be a little mini kitchen that I created here. I can always scale it up and make it, you know, change it from here on out, but that kind of gets me started on the process, right? So cool. Uh, I know I'm throwing a lot at you guys, but hopefully you're kind of able to absorb as long as you kind of understand that everything that I'm building is over here in the Pro Builder window, and I'm using the grids that I've already kind of set up. Uh, all I used first was the new shape to create my flat plane, and then I used a new poly ship to kind of draw on top of it and build on top. So cool. Now, since this is a kitchen, one thing I want to do is... Uh, the idea is that we're going to be on the inside of this kitchen, not on the outside, right? And you can kind of see this one that was built before. When I look through it, I'm looking through the walls. It's because the normals for these polygons are reversed. And ProBuilder has a neat thing where I can just quickly reverse those uh, UVs or the, the normals, right? To have them face in instead of out, right? So if you select the object, and I'm going to go make sure that I'm in the, uh, the object selection mode, right? I go over to my Pro Builder window. If you look around, you're going to see this flip normals, right? And if I click that with the object selected, you're going to notice that now they're turning on the inside. Like the texture is kind of facing towards the inside is the idea. Cool. Yeah, that's kind of the idea right there is that all the surfaces are facing on the inside. Cool. Very right, cool. Um, what do you think, Sandy? Yeah, it's 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 pretty cool, and I'm, I like how you explained everything. So, if you guys um, can see, you know, for the last steps, I mean, at first, Stephen was showing us some really nice uh, tools and tricks in Pro Builder, and uh, feel free to watch the video again and explore those things. But the last few things, which were very important, how he made that shape, he went to you know create a plane, applied the kitchen layout texture to it. So remember, he first made the new shape, then the new poly shape, and applied the texture to it. And the third step was flipping the normals. That's how you could see everything. Um, so you can always watch that, but that's how he's created that shape and inserted all those different objects. So pretty simple, the last few steps, but I'm glad you showed us like a nice little walkthrough of Pro Builder. It's, it is, if you start using it, you know, I, I use it from time to time and it is pretty powerful, like yeah. to build simple shapes and go in. And that UV tool, it's of course you don't want to start comparing now, but you know it's still it, it's still a very nice little tool with with some really really good tools in there. Um, so let's let's move ahead, uh, Stephen. Sure. You want to quickly introduce us to PolyBrush and show us some cool steps as well. Yeah. And while you guys, if you guys are still kind of playing around with with uh, Pro Builder and you want to you know take a moment and kind of. Uh, sort of follow along here. If you've just been kind of playing around with it and following along, or if you're going to watch the recording later, that's great either way. Um, but what want to kind of describe PolyBrush a little bit. Um, it's, um, while it's kind of a companion uh, to ProBuilder, it uh, does things quite differently. Uh, it's, uh, if anybody's ever used ZBrush or have even heard of ZBrush, it is not a replacement for ZBrush, but it works in a similar way with some of the tools in, in ZBrush. So the, the idea was not to bring ZBrush inside of, of Unity, um, but um, it, it's a way to kind of do some simple sculpting and, and sort of, uh, again, another world building tool inside of Unity uh, to help gray box out a level. <clears throat> so... It's got a couple different brushes um, or uh, sort of abilities. Um, you, can, um, you can blend uh, textures and colors. You can actually paint via with color. You can paint with a texture. You can sculpt meshes. Um, yeah, we have to make sure that we have the um, kind of the poly density needs to be sort of lower to, to sculpt. It needs those vertices to sculpt. It can't do it on, uh, you know, with a very simple... Uh, shape with not a lot of vertices. So um, you can go ahead and do that. Uh, it also allows you to take, you can paint with poly objects. So you can use a game object to, to kind of duplicate over. So like say you're, you're creating grass, you know, you build one blade of grass and then you can paint with that blade of grass as a, as a poly object. Um, maybe having poly objects of, as blades of grass might not be the best way to go, but just as an example that you could do that, right? And it's a great way to combine uh, ProBuilder. Uh, as I kind of mentioned, it's a great way to, to, to work with ProBuilder, kind of help build out a world. Yeah, cool. Absolutely. Um, let's, let's go ahead. And I know a couple of people are stuck in the 
you know, how did you change the height? I do want to sure. go to poly brush, but uh, Stephen, if you could uh, just yeah. tell us a well, quick um, Yeah, I was kind of ahead. noticing that in the QA, and I'll kind of go back to the, to the UV and show that really quick, uh, just kind of address that, just so that nobody uh, really missed that. So I'm going back to, uh, to Unity here, and I'm going to just kind of show quickly again. I'm going to go to New Shape. I'm going to click that little plus, and I'm going to make a plane, right? And I'm going to close that and then move this over, just kind of show this really quickly, right? And what, we had di uh, what I did is I applied that blueprint material to, to that flat plane. And then I went to the UV editor. And in the UV editor, with that object selected, I made sure that I was on this object selection, which can be selected here too. You see these two are combined. You know, when I select it here, it changes it in the scene view. So uh, then what I'm going to have to do is kind of, I sort of scroll out until I see sort of dolly out the camera until I see all the UVs and I switch it into the vertex mode and I select, I just kind of drag across all those vertices that are, that are that flat plane and I can move them around now, right? Really the basics of this is I could just move it around. You can see it moving around on the object. And all I did is I clicked, when I select those vertices, you can see these actions. This action window is always there, but it only populates when you have something selected, right? The UVs are selected. When that's selected, I'm going to go ahead and click fit UVs. And it sort of adds, it kind of scales down the UVs to fit the size of the texture is really the kind of the idea. It doesn't change the, it doesn't scale down your object size. And what it does is it makes the UVs fit that texture size. So hopefully that kind of helps out. Yeah, very kind of cool. Quickly. Thanks for cool. showing that again. Yeah, uh, no problem. Let's, let's keep moving on to poly sure. brush because UVs is one of those topics, you know, people, <laughs> you know, yeah. either, either, I always say either you would like it or you don't like it. I, I, I've those. said the same thing. I, I kind of quite often, I think that people that, um, you know, do rigging, uh, you know, kind of understand UVs and kind of, you know, and do some, some painting uh, they, they kind of understand that and some people get it and some people don't. So it's kind of one of those things that like, <laughs> if you like it, you like it. If you don't, then yeah, you either learn to like it or not. Right. <laughs> right. So let's move on to, uh, you know, you're going to show us poly brush and I know some people want us to look at the other step that you showed about, you know, extruding it, but we can always come back to that. If not, sure. you guys yeah, always yeah. have the video, but Perfect. let's move on to poly brush. Yeah. Um, so with poly brush, I'm going to go kind of the same steps to showing this pro builder window. I'm going to go to tools, go to poly brush and go to the uh, poly brush window. And I'm going to pull that up. And again, it opens up a separate window. Again, I like to dock it here next to the pro builder window. So it's docked, but if you want it floating above again, it's your preference, however you want to do it. I just like it here because then, then I don't have all these different windows floating on top of my scene. But uh, just to kind of quickly go through this, it's a, it's a pretty simple setup, a pretty simple window, but all the tools for the brushes are, are right at the top, right? So this first one is Sculpt on Meshes. And what that allows me to do is to take a brush and, uh, well, better than just kind of describing it, let me walk through it. So I'm going to go to, uh, to Pro Builder and I'm going to, actually, I'm going to use this object right here. Uh, this fl flat plane that I created and I'm going to make sure oh, got to be in component mode. I'm going to move it down and move it over. Right. One thing to kind of notice about this is I, I, again, I need to have a, um, I need to subdivide this object so that there's enough sort of vertices on or faces on the object to sculpt with. So the great thing is that pro builder has subdivide object. So back in the pro builder window, I click subdivide. And if I uh, kind of click it again, you're going to see all these subdivisions, right? All these faces and vertices are going to be on this one poly object. And I'll switch back to poly brush and I'm going to go to sculpt on meshes, right? Uh, it's going to give me a power and then it's a, a normal brush. You can do, you can change this up, but just on a basic level, when I uh, go to paint on this, you're going to see a, this sort of brush shape on top of the object. When I start brushing, you're going to see it starts to pull that object up a little bit, right? It starts, starts to modify the shape of that. I'm kind of pulling it like I select it and kind of pull it up or I can brush across it, right? And the more I brush, the more it pulls it up. The next brush is actually smooth geometry. So I can use that to kind of push it back down, 
I can sculpt, I can use this brush to sculpt. And the cool thing is you can kind of see the angle of the brush when I go across the surface, right? So I can kind of sculpt with this a little bit, I can push and pull. Again, it's sort of like ZBrush, but in a very simplified version, right? Um, but very effective in like, I, if I want to create, you know, mountains or just terrain, I can kind of quickly modify my terrain, right? The next brush here is a paint vertex colors. When I switch to that, it's going to give me a color. Right now, it's a sort of white, but I'm going to, let's say I switch to a blue color or a green color, and then I can just paint right on top of that surface. And right now, since it's got a, a texture on it, uh, it's, it's probably interfering with the fact that, you know, I'm trying to paint a color on top of a texture. So if I create a second plane and, and don't put a texture on it, it'll uh, try to paint a color on top of that, right? So the next brush is the scatter prefabs. And this is what we're going to kind of play around with a little bit. Right? If I choose this brush, and uh, you'll see that in the materials for this project, when you imported this asset, there's this plant material, right? Um, if I try to use this brush right now, it's not going to do anything, right? It doesn't have anything really attached to it to do anything, right? Just like these other brushes, if I have something selected, it's going to, you know, kind of start to, to do something, right? Right now, this one doesn't because I have to load this brush. I have to load this poly object into the, uh, uh, into the brush, right? So I need to drag it into the current. And for some reason, it doesn't want to drag it in there. <laughs> oh, that's fun when it does that, right? Um, here, I'm going to add a new brush. There we go. And let's see if I can go back to, uh, to my materials. Oh, because I was trying to drag the material in there. That's what was happening. I need the prefab. I need to drag a prefab into this brush. There we go. Figured out my own problem, what I was doing. Once it's in the current palette, you'll notice that I had to click on that, uh, that poly shaper, that... Um, that prefab to get it to load in this brush loadout. When it's in the brush loadout and I have the brush selected and I have the object selected, then I can start brushing. I can paint, start painting on that game object, right? And it, what it's doing is it's using that game object to kind of keep brushing, you know, kind of add uh, multiple objects in there. Now, how many it does is, um, is sort of in these, uh, the strength of it. Right. right now it's set to one. It's got an inner and outer radius, right? So that you can kind of see the in the middle of the brush, there's a, a ring. And then the outer part of the brush, there's another ring. The outer radius is sort of the farthest extent that you're going to paint with this game object. Um, the inner radius is where it's, you know, sort of that inner strength, right? So the outer radius is, it won't paint outside of that unless I paint along. So you can kind of see that it's sort of randomizing where it's kind of painting this. It's sort of using it, it's just using a game object as paint. So basically that's it. Uh, I, I realize that the kind of the setup of this can be a little, little confusing, but make sure, like I was in the materials tab, make sure that you're in the prefab, you're loading the prefab into the current palette and then you select it to add it as the brush. So you can actually add multiple objects and kind of quickly switch between those objects to add it to, the, to a brush. Really uh, powerful. Yeah. And the last one is painting on textures. I can use that texture to paint on another object. So if I choose textures and I go to the plane and actually go to uh, this one, I go to materials and I choose the texture, I can actually select here and I can start painting that texture on a separate object, right? Let me quickly show the steps to the first uh, few things over here. Yeah, sure. And, and Let's, let me uh, stop my share. You can do that. So here are the steps that what Stephen did earlier um, for the poly brush, you know, detached, you know, you had the poly plane over there and you subdivided the face to add the vertices because obviously if you're going to start to paint something, you need more geometry, you need more subdivisions. Yep. And then that's when he opened the poly brush in the tab over there and started to paint the surface to give it some depth. Now, uh, as, as Stephen mentioned, if you've used ZBrush or even if you've used some um, tools like Maya also has these similar um, tools, if you're coming from that, if you're not, then this is great, <laughs> even better. You, you've learned something new. Um, you know, you start painting and Steven showed us a few things, how you started painting and, you know, extruding the surface and giving it some nice uh, depth over there. Great for making terrains, like he said, and also uh, started painting some vertex colors. The, the one with the prefabs was amazing. And please, um, you know, it's not in the 
current steps right now, but again, feel free to watch the video. Um, I think those were really cool, painting with yeah. the, you know, different yeah. prefabs. The best part is how you can load different prefabs and switch between them and start painting. I like how they also angle to the surface. Um, that, was, that was really, really good. So yeah. these were the steps yeah. right here. And again, all of this is recorded, so please feel free You know, start building some of your really nice terrains and tools, um, You know, some really nice walls. I wonder, can I uh, answer some of these Q&A real quick? Yeah, please. Just to kind of get to it. Um, so somebody was asking how to get those vertex coordinates and sizes. I'm not oh, really yes, sure that exactly was, I was what the question's referring to. The, oh, it's basically those, you know, HEDs that the HUDs that showed up for um, when you selected the object. I, I think that's what the person was asking. Oh, uh, I'm guessing that means like, how do I switch to like the vertex mode to kind of move verte vertices around? Um, might be something kind of cool to show really quick. I'll switch to that if if I'm understanding the question properly. No, you tell me if if you think yeah, I'm on the right track. I think he's asking. The person was asking about you know how you see on your object right now your uh -huh. three, uh, three, five, These and five. Coordinates? Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so you go to Tools, Pro Builder, Dimensions Overlay. Like I'll hide it, and then Tools, Pro Builder, Dimension Overlay, Show. So yeah, I hope that's that. That's what you were asking. That's what I thought you were asking. Yeah, um, kind of quickly, if I can kind of show this really quickly. If I switch to say the um, the edge selection mode, and I want to ch sort of change just one of these edges, um, I can actually it'll move it, it'll snap it because ProGrids is on. So like I can just select an edge and kind of change an edge on an object, and it'll snap. So I just thought I'd kind of show that really quick. Uh, somebody's saying, is, isn't it taxing uh, displaying the prefab brush? Yeah, it will be. If you're using it a lot, like if you're using it to you know, build a bunch of uh, leaves or, or grass, yeah, it'll start to affect performance. So I, I would say use it sparingly, use it where you need to use it. You can also change it later. Um, you know, it's kind of a nice way to kind of, maybe even you want to make rocks or rubble or something, you know, don't go hog wild and make your entire scene out of all these rocks, but you know, that it might, uh, you know, help you to kind of quickly build out a few and then you can kind of move them around or whatever. The next question is uh, how to make a hole instead of a mountain. I'm thinking you mean like how to make a valley if we're using this as like a mountain and valley kind of metaphor. Um, if you go to poly brush, if you use that smoothing brush, you can kind of, let me uh, select this. If you keep pushing it down, you'll eventually get like a, you'll create a valley instead of a, um, a, a, a mountain. Uh, so you have to kind of pull it down or, um, I think you can pull it from like, you can sculpt on the other side. Uh, I'm just kind of experimenting really quick, but. Can you hold alt and do it? Up, Cause I know in some other software as you can, when you're painting. You can hold Alt will take it down and control. Yeah, it. let me see. I think it's funny. I, I feel like I probably would have used that, but um, here you can't do Alt. Um, but Alt will move it. Yeah. Yeah, because Alt moves you around. I'll have to. I'll have to look into that um, to go below rather than keep taking it up. So what we want you to do, you know, this was some really cool things Stephen showed us, but the poly brush, the poly uh, pro builder, and also that that explanation of ProGrids was great. I thought uh, I, it looks extremely powerful. Please use it. Um, check out the FBX exporter tutorial on Unity Learn. That's the link over there, and you know, one of the moderators should be able to post that pretty quickly. Uh, if you haven't, then please, please, we highly recommend you check that out. Uh, you know, you'll set up the FBX supporting Unity, you know, you can polish the assets in Maya, 3ds Max, or whatever software of your choice, and then you can export them back in Unity to create a final polished scene. You know, and we would love to see your progress. So there's the link to post your progress in the, you know, assess asset management submission. So you can use the Pro Builder poly brush. Um, you can watch this tutorial one more time. You know, everything is like we mentioned earlier, everything is always posted, all our recordings. You know, you can explore the Unity to Maya or 3ds Max lesson to make changes to your objects if you want to um, and create other objects using, we would love to see what you've done using Pro Builder and poly brush. And again, that's the link over there and the mods have already uh, posted it. Thanks a lot, James. All those, you know, the asset management materials links are there, and also the asset management submission link is right there too. So really would love to see what you guys do with this because this is such a nice thing in Unity now. And, uh, you know, if you're coming, especially if you're coming from another DCC or digital content creation package, then this should be very easy for you. And the fact that you can do it in Unity is really, really powerful.
Yeah, yeah, it's a really cool ability. Absolutely. Again, if you've not joined our Unity Connect group, the link should be coming in the chat too. Please join us. There's a lot of members over there. There might be even more than 6942, I think, right now. <laughs> I'm sure there is at this <laughs> and point. And <there's, laughs> that's just a snapshot, as you can see. There's more than seven people online right now. Yeah. There's a lot of people over there, and they're constantly commenting and you know, posting their work, and you get a lot of feedback uh, immediately about your work. And you get the best part is you get very honest feedback. So yeah. <laughs> it's not your friend telling you it looks good, but it <laughs> sometimes doesn't. But it'll get very honest feedback, and you'll get some really cool people or, uh, you know, helping you out over there. So highly, highly recommend join that connect group. So that's the link again over there and it should have been posted as well. There you go. It's in the chat too. And again, you know, feel free to post any discussion you know, and, you know, any questions, anything you have and, and also comment on other people's work too. That way, you know, it's, it's the whole idea of building a community over there. That's what we are doing. And like I said, a lot of people are on there with that, you know, it's right on the dot, but we will still hang around over here if you have questions. And like I said, you know, this was a nice little, you know, intro for a lot of folks about Poly, you know, uh, Polybrush, ProBuilder, and ProGrids. Highly, highly recommend, you know, the, the challenge I, I can tell you guys is, you know, me and Steven are talking about this, is start building something of your own completely inside Unity. See where you reach with that. Use those UE tools. You know, if you come from a different UE package, then keep that aside for a little bit and start using it and see what you can come up with. And we would love to see those in the assets and missions. Yeah. It'd be great to see. Yeah. A lot of people, any other questions in Q and a, let's see. Yeah. Um, so it, it looks like one person answered another person's question in the Q a. So uh, it is control. If you uh, hold down control and use the sculpt tool uh, for pro for pro brush uh, here, let me switch over to that and I'll just kind of show that. And I kind of forgot about that. So if you are on the sculpt uh, meshes and you hold down control on the Mac, I guess it's control on the PC as well. You can pull down, you can uh, brush down instead of brush up. So right, holding so it's control goes right. down, not holding it down. You can, you know, kind of brush up on it. Yeah. So that's a way to create it. Does this happen um, see when you mess your um, hotkeys up between softwares? <laughs> yeah. Oh, I totally do. Oh my gosh. Uh, I, you know, I use Photoshop a lot and I use Maya a lot and I'm constantly yep. like, like in Maya, I'll hold down the space bar to kind of move left to right. You know, like in Photoshop, you hold down the space bar and it gives you yeah. like a hand tool. I'll do that in Maya all the time or I'll be in, I'll be in Photoshop. And for some reason, I think that I can rotate it <laughs> like, like it's a 3d object. And I'm like, yeah, oh, yeah no, I do that a lot. Too. I go with Maya, 3ds Max, Unity, and then suddenly I'll go into something else and then and then I go with being a Mac and a PC and then. Right. Oh, yeah, yeah. And, <laughs> and what really messes me up is I, my sometimes use, uh, I use a virtual PC on my Mac. Oh, yeah. And that'll really mess you up because then you're like, wait, well, how, do I, how do I get the Windows menu up? You know. <laughs> There's a couple um, more questions in the Q&A. How yeah. many polygons are okay if you want to use all these in VR? So that's a, it's, um, not an easy question to answer. <laughs> so <laughs> AR and VR, you really need to keep, make sure, A, it's the tar like what you're targeting. Uh, so if, if you're creating an, uh, you know, an, a an augmented reality app, like you really got to keep low poly, right? So, I mean, you're reducing everything you possibly can. Uh, in VR, kind of the same way, but like, are you targeting, you know, Oculus? Or are, you are you targeting, um, you know, sort of a, a headset or a, um, you know, phone VR? Um, it, so you want to just keep the lowest polygons possible. So it's hard to answer like how many polygons are okay. It really as, as little as possible would be the best answer for that one. Um, but yeah. Um, and somebody, I saw it uh, leave the, another question. Um, but uh, if anybody wanted to know to sh sort of how do I paint on textures again, uh, I am going to show that. Uh, really quick. Um, uh, and it, I'm getting an error. It says it doesn't look like any of the materials on this object support texture blending, which is kind of interesting. So um, I think you have to kind of start without a texture uh, on there to just sort of paint textures. So, but I'm going to try this really quick. So I'm on the, on the brush. There's a flood and fill. Um, I am going to, I was thinking about just changing the material. So uh, 
I'm trying to wonder if I should start a new object or not. Here, I'll just, uh, I'll just right click and create a new material. And then I'm gonna apply that material to this. And then I'll go to the texture brush. And um, let's see. I think that you can, that, that warning is kind of concerning me. Um, but from what I understood, you can, I haven't used this specific brush. How about that one? No, I'm that's my anything. default brush. So I might have to look up that because uh, I haven't used the the texture brush too much. Um, you can always post like, the connect group if you have it. Yeah, I think I'll do that. Play. Yeah, because uh, I know it's in the documentation, but you, you somehow you have to attach the the texture to that. So um, oh, now it disappeared. Yeah, so I'll have to look that up and I'll have to post it in the connect group. I'll look yep. up into that. Yeah, with that, I think we don't have any more questions. We're a little over time, but. Thanks again, everyone, for joining us. Yes, Boan, uh, these tools are like new world in Unity. Awesome session. Yeah, thank you very much. Yeah, these are new, uh, like a really new thing in Unity, and I, I'm glad they're there finally. You yeah, know, exactly. Finally. Yeah. It's amazing. But thanks again, everyone, for joining. Again, the recordings, you know, are posted all the time. Please watch them, go through them, and we would love to see in those asset management submissions, we would love to see what you guys have done with uh, Pro Builder, PolyBrush, and Program. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, everyone. With that, signing off. Thank you.